If you're Intel and you're having manufacturing problems, but you pull off a record quarter its sales, just even with server products, how do you do that? Well, the answer is behind me. You, you make them a deal, they can't refuse. Behind me is a Gigabyte R181 server. It's a great 1U dual socket 3647 platform for Xeon CPUs. The problem is Xeon CPUs are expensive. The Platinum 8180, that's a $10,000 CPU. And Intel, they posted a record quarter, so they're selling CPUs and stuff like crazy. How did they do it? Well, the answer lies behind me, because the CPUs that are in my Gigabyte server, they're e-waste from Amazon. Yeah, 18 cores, 18 cores Xeon, those aren't good enough for Amazon anymore. They upgraded. What does that have to do with uh, Intel's record quarter and what Amazon's throwing away and what I'm building for the new level one storage server? Well, it's all related, but it's gonna take me a second to explain. Intel. Intel's been in the news. Intel's been sued because of the call. Oh my gosh. If you've been living under a rock, Intel announced that 7 nanometer has also been delayed. Process problems. We've been on 14 nanometers for a while now, several, many generations, and this is talked about a lot in the desktop space. This isn't really talked a lot about in the server space. Now Intel just posted a record quarter, record financials, even though they're not able to produce higher performing CPUs on their 14 nanometer process. I mean, we're still pretty much limited to 28 cores, 56 threads. Yes, yes, I know there is the 56 core processor, but it's special, it's solder only, there's not a socket for it. Don't think Intel was planning to do that until the 64 core epics came along, but if you're Amazon or another hyperscaler and you've got a huge fleet of servers like this one, Intel server socket 3647 has been around since even before the uh, Epic Naples platform. And so if you're Amazon, chances are you've got a lot of servers laying around that have socket 3647. On the desktop, you know, it's like we've had Z270 and Z, Z170, Z270, Z370, Z390, Z490. And at least the change from Z270 to Z370 and from 390 to 490, power, power delivery. Those were the big changes. But if you're talking about servers, things get a little more interesting. Yeah, there are Xeons that have higher TDP, but that 205 watt TDP sweet spot, that really hasn't changed much. So for hyperscalers like Amazon, you know, it's easy to imagine that they've got a lot of 12, 14, 16, 18 core server CPUs that are that first generation of CPU available for socket 3647. And then you look at the Q2 2020 financials from Intel, which were just posted, and they did, they, they beat guidance. In terms of like performing for shareholders, Intel could not have done better, even despite their manufacturing problems on 14 and now seven nanometer, their own internal seven nanometer process. And you know, they're exploring working with TSMC more for CPU production. A lot of people don't realize that Intel has actually been one of TSMC's larger customers forever, mainly just producing chipsets and things like that. I think it goes back like 10 plus years, if I'm not mistaken. And so hyperscalers like Amazon, it's like, let's throw out the Xeons and get the Epics, right? Because the Epics are better, better platform, better hardware. But what if Intel made you a deal? How can you satisfy shareholders not technically sell a processor below cost because we are talking about the platinum 8180 the 28 core monsters you see see it pop up sometimes in my articles you see it pop up in in anatech those are ten thousand dollar cpus how do you offer those cpus to companies but without offering a discount because shareholders get nervous when you start discounting products i swear there's a point to all this rambling so this is a xeon spoiler alert this is a real non-engineering sample Xeon Platinum 8124M. That's not on Intel Arc. This is what's known as an off roadmap CPU. 3647, epic. They're similar, but not the same. One of these things is not like the other. Amazon or another hyperscaler, but most likely Amazon, paid a fair bit of money for this CPU just a couple of years ago. It's 18 cores, three gigahertz. It's got a pretty solid turbo. But uh, yeah, they want to upgrade to a 28 core. 
they can upgrade to a 28 core. All they gotta do is swap the processors. This whole platform is qualified, it's guaranteed, it's going to work with Amazon's management infrastructure and their VM infrastructure. They don't have to do nearly as much qualification as they would if they were switching to an AMD platform because they would have to qualify an entirely new chassis, perhaps even a new management software stack because these servers are not managed by, by humans. No, it's managed by automation. You just throw it in a rack, you plug a MAC address into a spreadsheet somewhere, and then the robots configure your server. Well, this whole platform, if you just swap CPUs from 18 to 28 cores, assuming that the power delivery is the same and the power requirements are the same, you're just gonna get 10 more cores. And if you've got thousands or maybe even millions of sockets that you've got to juggle, then this is the much more economical option. And so I think a lot of hyperscalers are adopting that strategy, especially if the pricing's right. $10,000 for an 8180, that is not the correct pricing. You wanna guess how much they're liquidating the 8124 is for? It's like 500 to $750. A $500 18 core server processor that I can just drop right into my dual socket 3647 Xeon server from Gigabyte. This is translating to a level one storage upgrade. I've got my off-road map Xeon, which is not guaranteed to work in every motherboard. You gotta look at that compatibility list. And uh, gonna have 36 cores, 56 threads in this chassis. And the only reason it makes sense is because I could get the processors for $500. So you saying the Threader Pro Tool it's all Xeon's blasphemy. Woo. Oh, I almost forgot. We need to put a 10 gig OCP card in there. I gotta have all the gigabits. Now I have a feeling that maybe as a result of that lawsuit or maybe as a result of other things that are coming, that Intel is going to have to make disclosures about what off roadmap CPUs they've provided for hyperscaler customers. I mean, there's such a thing as a volume discount, and then there's such a thing as, we're gonna price this to try to keep competitors from upgrading their whole chassis, because yeah, I mean, if we, if we do the dual 28 cores, that's 56 cores in this chassis, it's like the maximal upgrade. Um, depending on what the price is, you know, even though that's not an 8180, it's labeled something else, but this is the M variant of the processor, remember too, so it's an even higher memory capacity. So even though it's only 18 cores, I can dump one and a half terabytes of memory in this chassis per socket, three terabytes in this chassis. That's uh, it's pretty awesome. And there you have it. Assuming we get post and this motherboard's BIOS supports these off-road map Xeons, which is not a given, we're in good shape. Nice, it detected the 10 gig properly. Well, how about that? We've got post, we've got booting, we've got CPU support, 36 cores and two times 36 threads because I saw it like 72, 72 threads. Now they're off-road map. They are not engineering sample CPUs, but they're not officially supported by Intel and there's no warranty. So, you know, cause they were, for that one hyperscaler. But it's easy to understand that since there's a flood of these CPUs, but not a flood of chassis or motherboards, it's pretty safe to assume that Amazon just bought a ton of new 3647 CPUs, probably Cascade Lake or something even newer, probably also something off-road map from Intel. And that is no doubt a source of some of their Q2 revenue. How much of it? Mm, I don't know. I mean, they did say that they made a lot of money from things other than processors, and that's true. But Intel is still selling processors, even though, you know, I think socket 3647's days are numbered. So to recap, what more proof do you need than that? I mean, Z170, everything since Haswell has been basically the same chipset. I mean, the chipset's improved a little bit, but it's the same DMI 3.0 connection. Not really a lot has changed. In the server space, the same thing is true, but it actually is kind of saving Intel instead of on the desktop where it fuels the purchase of more motherboards in server space. It's actually kind of a blessing now because Intel can just discount their existing 14 nanometer products, label them under a different name. I mean, the 8124M, the clock speeds, yeah, they're not quite as good as an 8180, but turbo and reality, you know, Amazon knows that there's not that much of a premium. Amazon has definitely optimized that curve exactly where they want it in terms of power, performance, cost to operate, those kinds of things. So I can enjoy whatever engineering Amazon did to request this specific processor at this specific price point. And you better be sure that whatever Amazon is getting in its place that's off-road map is just as hard negotiated. 
You know, if I were, if, if all things being equal, I would rather have a Rome based server, especially like the P series processors. It's all brand new stuff. But with some liquidation of some 3647 gear that you can pick up on eBay and, and sites like that, you know, server surplus, government surplus, and the fact that you can get really high performance socket 3647 CPUs like these 18 core monsters relatively inexpensively, that secondary market for your home lab. It's pretty viable. I mean, well, you could use it as a desktop, but it's loud and you don't, you don't, I don't think you want to use it for a desktop, but 36 cores, that's pretty awesome. So if you do decide to do something like this or you build something like this for your home lab, come and share it in the forums at level one. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out and I'll see you there.